Welcome back. Uh, let's give, big, give a huge welcome to our next guest, Neha. Neha, thanks for joining us today on the AWS On Air show. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know what you do here. Yeah, thank you so much, Todd and Jeff. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Neha Singh. I work as Senior Product Manager in AWS, um, specifically for a service called Audit Manager. Majority of my time in AWS goes in talking to customers in the compliance and audit space, trying to understand their pain points and trying to find opportunities on how to simplify this space and automate um, more and more. I'm joining in from Seattle, Washington, where it's bright and sunny. And I'm specifically mentioning this because we don't get to say that very often. <laughs> that's true. Hey, that, that's true. I've uh, I come from a very cloudy place, and so I, I can feel uh, that. So that's a good thing. Um, Neha, you kind of said something that I don't really think about a lot, but I know in past roles it kind of makes people clam up a little bit. Audits and, and compliance, and that's kind of a, a those are scary terms sometimes. Um, but we have a service just for that, Audit Manager. What is Audit Manager and how does it help customers? Yes. So Audit Manager, as I said, is a service uh, to help you simplify your audit and compliance. The kind of customers that Audit Manager uh, targets or the customer segment, uh, think of any organization that work, works in a, a very regulated environment like financial sectors or healthcare. They have to comply with different compliance requirements, be it PCI, be it HIPAA, be it NIST or CIS. When I talk to customers or for anyone who has ever been part of audit um, in their lifetime can tell you how much painful it is. When I talk to yeah. the customers, I've literally heard them telling me that, you know, they take thousands of screenshots just to show it or present it to the auditor when, it, when it's the time of audit. And we are trying to solve exactly that screenshot problem by automating the evidence collection across customers usage on AWS and presenting them audit ready reports. So any evidence that audit manager collects on AWS basically comes with a verifiable provenance that customers can simply take it in front of their auditors and show that it's not been tampered with. So we are trying to save their time and effort. Yeah, and if I can add to that, you mentioned PCI, so that's the payment card industry. Yeah. So anyone who is processing any sort of uh, credit card numbers has to be uh, part of the PCI accreditation, which means audits. I have been through that. And Neha, I like the idea of trying to save uh, time because if you don't know, I'm not saying you now, but for our listeners, if you don't know, if you haven't been through this, there are whole organizations in companies that are responsible for preparing for these audits. And when one audit is done one year, they immediately start preparing for the next audit. And that means collecting that evidence that Neha was talking about. And that takes a long time. And it's not just those people that are collecting that evidence. It's each environment. So I was a VMware admin. So the VMware team had their own session with the auditor. We, I was responsible for collecting all of the content from my area. The data, the DBAs had to do it for all the database stuff. The networking guys had to do it for all the. So the more we can automate that, that evidence gathering, that took months. And if we can save time with that, that's a huge win for everyone involved. Now, what are some of the ways that we do that in Audit Manager? I think you said something about common controls. What's a control and what makes it common? Yes, so a control, you can think of it as any requirement. So for example, as Jeff mentioned, you know, payment card industry. If an organization who's in the financial sector uh, has to adhere to PCI compliance, they will have to look at a PCI framework that is provided by the organization. And within that framework, there will be a set of controls, basically requirements. One of the requirement could be that, you know, wherever you are storing the customer data, that um, data store should be encrypted and nobody should have access to it or only a specific people should have access to it. So auditor will come and tell you that, you know, show me the evidence around it. Now, what is common control? That's a good question. So we launched, I think a week and a half back, uh, the very first common control library in audit manager. Basically, a common control is a way for organizations to deduplicate the requirements across multiple different frameworks. So at AWS, um, we have this framework called working backwards, where we work backwards from the customer problem. So we have been hearing from our customers that, you know, as audit manager, you automate the evidence collection across cloud. 
great. But what about common controls? So these customers have spent tons of time and effort in building their own um, custom common control library, which basically means that these requirements are common across multiple different frameworks that the organization has to adhere to. So with common controls, we are basically allowing customers to really map their custom enterprise control with the AWS compliance data. Ah, so common meaning it's in both, uh, it's in multiple compliance or regulatory standards that you might be in. And I can see where that would create some headache, mm -hmm. right? If I have to do it over here, I don't want to have to redo it over here. Uh, I've already done it. And so it's common across that and you've made that easier. And I understand you're going to show us how easy it is. Uh, should we bring on, bring your screen on and, and do a quick little demo? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's do Neha, it. Just while you're pulling this up is a good example would be like maybe a hospital who is needs to be HIPAA compliant, but also takes and uh, also takes credit cards and is responsible for credit card numbers. They would also be in the PCI. So you're saying these common controls would be, let's find the things that are common between HIPAA and PCI. So you only have to collect that evidence once. Absolutely. Bang on. So basically collect once and review once. That's the approach we are following with common control versus the previous approach where they have to collect once, but then they have to review it across many different frameworks. Gotcha. That's wonderful. All well, right. So what are we looking at here, Neha? So that's the first landing page in Audit Manager. So just to make you comfortable with how Audit Manager looks like, this is the dashboard that we provide to compliance professionals so that they can slice and dice um, on the various assessments they have. So for example, I have in the dropdown assessments created with PCI or SOC 2, I can just look at what are the controls with non-compliant evidence or how many non-compliant evidence I have. Um, in the left-hand navigation tab is where we have the framework library. The frame today audit manager provides 32 plus frameworks. These include the standard security frameworks like we mentioned. It also includes AWS specific frameworks like the foundational best practices, um, NIST, SOC2, and then the recently launched generative AI frameworks for Amazon SageMaker and Bedrock. Um, Let's talk about the showstopper, the con uh, common control library. So sure. each framework, what you look at, basically, as you can see, will have hundreds of controls in it. Now, when we go to the control library in Audit Manager, you can see the common control library um, for any customer who basically um, uses this Audit Manager. It will serve as a self-serve tool for compliance professional because these common controls will speak the exact language what customers or these compliance professionals speak in their organization. So yeah, this is how customers can use it. They can come to our control library. We provide different filters. For example, let's say as a customer, I want to look at controls related to data protection. And within data protection, I'm specifically looking for controls which relate to data encryption. So when I filter these down, I see there are three common controls which are related to data encryption and data uh, protection. Um, under each common control um, are core controls, or basically you can think of as the controls which help you to map it to different data sources in AWS. So you can think of it as a five-level hierarchy. On the top is the uh, domains under which we have the control objectives, under which we have common controls, and then, of course, we have controls which will map it to various resources um, in the AWS side. Um, let me quickly show you how a control detail will look like. So when I open a common control, this is where I, as a customer, I can read what this common control do. So what is the main agenda or goal? Underneath, I can see the various controls which are mapped to data sources, basically from where this common control would bring the evidence back to the customer. and when I open the related requirement as a customer, I can actually see um, this common control is actually a requirement in uh, various frameworks in HIPAA, frameworks in CIS side, and various requirements in the NIST um, 800. So customers can really um, look at those common control and make those connections for different frameworks that they have. You took the question right out of my mouth. I was like, how do we know that it's common and where are the compliance that these map to? And and this is, you know what I really like about this demo so yeah. far that I've seen it is that it's very intuitive, it's very simple. There's not a bunch of things to configure. There's not a bunch of calls to action I've got to decipher. Um, it very clearly states these are the controls 
And then you can click into those and start to understand where those controls are mapped. Uh, and, and we, we want to know if our, if our audience uh, it has any can questions we, for Neha. We're live mm -hmm. right now. So if you have a question, we can get it answered from an expert at AWS. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Neha. or have you ever, let us know your experience. Have you ever been in that audit room across the table from a PCI auditor asking for your evidence and asking uh, to prove how many times to prove that your ESXi host changed uh, admin passwords every three months. Right. Uh, yeah. Tell us how that went. But Neha, I, I, I wanted to ask you, you, you gave a good example of a control, um, encrypted data. Yes. So, But I imagine that all of these frameworks are written by different people. So that encrypted data might be worded slightly different in PCI speak versus NIST speak. <clears throat> how, did, how did AWS come... And, and figure all these common, like what was common uh, being that we pro you probably couldn't just search for data encryption because you'd have to really look through all these and know each one of these frameworks. Yeah, that's, that's a fa fair question. So what we did is we worked extensively with security assessors, internal um, AWS auditors and compliance professionals in the security assurance team within AWS to kind of identify these common requirements across different frameworks, and then really map these requirements up to the um, data source uh, level, where we are saying that, you know, for, for S3 bucket, this is the requirement, this is the config rule that should be mapped to this control. So that's how we came up with this whole library. So it sounds like a lot of pre-work to help all of those compliance organizations that probably would have had to have done that before this. Absolutely. Hopefully this is saving them all sometimes. So that's wonderful. Yeah. One and of Naya, the what, biggest, what, yes, please go ahead. I was going to say, we, we've only got just a few minutes left in this segment. I want to make sure we get to all of your demo. What um, is there anything else that you've got for us? There is actually one um, other thing that I wanted to say that one of the biggest benefit we have for large organizations is that they can actually use this common control as a data source. So let me show you how customers would come to audit manager and create a custom control because a lot of time they have custom requirement based on their unique needs. So a customer can come to create custom control flow. Um, let's say I, I want to create encryption control test. Um, I provide the detail for my custom control. If I have a description, I'll provide what this control will do. How will my team test this control, whether it's compliant or not compliant? When I click on next, this is a view that has been changed with the launch of common controls. So as a compliance professional, you can come here and then you can simply choose, uh, let's say I search for encrypt. So encrypt data at rest is a common control. I can simply choose it as a data source for my custom control. Since this common control will already come with pre-built mappings for the data source, as a compliance professional, I don't need to worry about all those, what happens at the AWS specific level. I can just choose multiple common controls that can be used as the data source. Um, as a compliance professional, I can stop here. But if there is a technical team uh, in the GRC side, let, let's say the security engineers, they can even go one layer down and they can specify specifically, let's say, um, S3 bucket. So let me search for, again, encryption. And I want to specifically ensure that I enable my S3 buckets. So I can choose this as a data source control for my custom control. Um, we also provide uh, more. You can consider it as Lego boxes. So we can also provide um, customers to choose their own managed data source. For example, a customer has a custom config rule created um, that they are managing, or a SecHub control, or an API call. They can really choose from these multiple options and define it as a data source for their custom control. So in the API, I will. I can choose the different APIs that we offer from where we'll go and collect the evidence. For example, let's say config describe rule. As a customer, I can define how frequently audit manager should go and collect that evidence using this API. So I can define the cadence and then just add it as a data source. And similarly, I can also add a manual data source because you must be aware that a lot of these requirements uh, also require customers to upload policies or some screenshots or some architecture diagrams. So that's where they can also create just a manual uh, data source um, and add it as a data source. So that's all. Um, this, this is the kind of flexibility we are trying to provide these customers. When they create next, they can just review it and create this custom control. 
and then they can use this custom control uh, by making it part of any framework that they want. And this will go and collect evidence as customers has defined. That's cool. So, so common controls become more common because now you can define your own controls, use those common controls as evidence. Um, so if you're building your own compliance requirements or your own uh, audit requirements, uh, you can use these as sources, but I, a ton of flexibility beyond the common control, uh, mm -hmm. manual APIs. Uh, that's really slick. And I like how you did that. Now, are there, um, you did this all through the AWS console. You're logged into your AWS console. You're walking through a wizard. Are there ways to do this programmatically? Uh, I know a lot of times we're doing infrastructure as code and we want to launch our compliance. Um, is there a way to do it that way? Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, customers can use it via DCLI or SDK, and we have provide tons of API support as well for Audit Manager. So all these controls or frameworks um, within Audit Manager can be accessed by customers using the APIs that we have. And we do see large organizations mostly using these API supports to create assessments in their organization and um, to collect these evidence. So there are multiple ways customer can use it. Yeah. So Todd, I liked your point beforehand. We were kind of focusing this on passing the audit. But the other use cases, if maybe maybe you're not part of the PCI industry and but you want to you have a security team that wants to audit things and do your own auditing, self auditing. Um, I mean, this this is going to help that as well and probably be a low barrier of entry to that, because that might at first if you're not doing any auditing and then, you know, the CIO says, hey, we need to start this. That seems kind of you know scary, but this tool is going to help you get going really quickly. With when that. I saw so. that you had generative AI uh, frameworks in there, so yeah. being you know we talk about that a lot and being compliant with that and, and using that responsibly, I think that's good for folks. Um, and I can tell you, going into this segment, you said audit. I got really triggered. I was like, I don't know, man, this scary <laughs> stuff. But after watching you, Neha, this is uh, I feel a lot better. I feel uh, at ease. Uh, and so thank you so much for coming on and showing us uh, this new feature. Um, we hope to have you back. I can't wait to see what else you do. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, Thanks, great. Thanks, Dana.